Christopher Columbus, sailor of boats, Spanish legend himself, or maybe Italian, but that's a story for another time. First man to discover America, right? Wrong. He wasn't even the first European on America. No, he wasn't even the first to set up a colony in America. That honor goes to Viking explorer Leif Erikson. The correct way to pronounce his name would be Leif Erikson. So enjoy me saying Leif instead of Life. So while Chris over here discovered America in 1492, Leif made the journey back in 1000. You heard that correct. He beat Columbus by almost 500 years. So let's get to this life guy. Why was he so great? Was he just some lucky Viking who got off course and randomly ended up in America? Well, no. Life was pretty much destined to greatness from day one. He's the son of Eric the Red, hence Ericsson. Damn names were simple back then. Eric the Red was actually the first person to settle Greenland, but that's a story for another day. This video isn't about Eric, but long story short, he got exiled from Norway, then fled to Iceland, then got exiled again. After that, he searched for somewhere else to live, leading him to discover and settle Greenland. So, life was born a bit earlier than this, around uh, 970 in Iceland, but he moved with his family to Greenland early in his life when his father was exiled, and made a quick trip to Norway for a few years when he was young. During his stay in Norway, he was baptized and converted to Christianity, then heading back to Greenland. When he returned, he had taken a priest with him on the journey so that a church in Greenland could be made. Leif's father wasn't too thrilled about the whole Christianity thing, but his mother wished that a church be built, and built it was. Life had heard rumors of a land even further to the west. He might have heard a story from his friend Bjarni Herjolfsson who had possibly seen America 15 years earlier, though not setting foot on the continent. Bjarni was blown off course uh, on a journey from Iceland to Greenland, but somehow ended up near the coast of North America. He, however, decided not to land as he really wanted to go to Greenland. Truly a shame. He was close enough to see America with his own eyes and he simply turned around and left. 15 years later, a certain Leif Erikson decided he would give the journey a shot. His father was set to join him, but fell off a horse on his way to the boat. He was fine, but took the bad omen and dropped out. Poor life. Now he would get all the glory and no other prominent Vikings to share with. Truly a shame. He approached Bjarni and bought his ship. That's right. He was using the same boat that nearly landed in America 15 years prior. He decided he would follow the same route that Bjarni had used, just in reverse. So with just 35 men and a single longship, he set sail. There's a little ambiguity about when exactly he set sail, but it's generally accepted to be in or at least very close to the year 1000. After sailing for some time, he reached a coastline. Life was disappointed though, as it was pretty much just one big piece of rock. He named this Helluland, which is roughly rock land or slab land. He then journeyed south, reaching a place of forest. He named this Markland, meaning woodland or forest land. He then sailed further south, believing there must be something magnificent there. And magnificent there was. He found a magnificent and beautiful land he named Vinland. There's a bit of debate about the meaning of the name Vinland. On one hand, it could just mean wineland, because lots of grapes and stuff to make wine with. And the other, grassland. I'm of the opinion that it could be both. While Vinland was very grassland-ish, he also gathered a bunch of grapes while there, so it could be both. There's also a physical evidence of a Viking settlement where the grasslands in question would be. You can even go visit them right here. Anyways, he decided to land in Vinland, set up a settlement and stayed until the end of the next winter, when he would set sail for Greenland. On his way back to Greenland, he rescued an Icelandic castaway and his crew, which for some reason gave him the nickname Life the Lucky. Although the name is a little hard to translate into English, Life the Lucky, that's the Danish version, Lucky often being translated to Lucky, but is closer in meaning to the combination of fulfilled and happy. So, a bit hard to translate there, but that's about what it means. And this is surprisingly where the story of life ends. 
A bit of an abrupt end, but he simply never returned to Winland and stayed in Greenland for the rest of his life. His death is also shrouded in mystery, having died somewhere between 1018 or 1025. A pretty big range, and no mention of his death, he's simply alive in one saga and deceased in the next. I hope you found the story of Life Eriksson, which Life Eriksson, the Danish way to pronounce it. Uh, I hope you found the story interesting. Um, I'm a bit of a history nerd. So yeah, thanks for watching.